Hi, I'm Dan Washburn, and I'm a country singer-songwriter, and you're watching Mr. Media. Dan Washburn is a country singer-songwriter with a great big old voice and personality, a knack for catchphrases, and an ever-present bit of whimsy in his delivery that brings a smile to my face whenever I hear his music play. And as you can see, the man looks the part, too. Give him a few minutes to win you over, even if you're not normally a country music fan, and I think you'll be sold. Washburn joins us today from his native Ontario, where he's just released a new single, Long Story Longer. Dan Washburn, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. Nice to be here, Bob. Nice to have you. Uh, Dan, Americans think they have the rights to country music all sewn up. So tell me, <laughs> what does a Canadian uniquely know and understand about country that an American might have missed? Well, we've got some, uh, like, like the U.S., we have influence on the East Coast that are, you know, very much rooted in Celtic music, uh, Ireland, Scotland, Acadian music, French, French uh, Canadian music, and so a lot of fiddle music. I grew up with that stuff uh, in the house. My, uh, my grandfather was a fiddle player. So we have that influence coming from the East Coast that, because we kind of settled coming from East to West, very much like you guys did. So we have that in, a strong influence. Um, and then, you know, with radio, of course, I mean, people started listening to, uh, you know, uh, what was the, uh, the Willing West Virginia. You used to be able to get that on the radio. My dad was telling me about it. And, and, the, and the Opry, of course, which that, that all. all and, um, and then we had a couple of Canadian singers that went down that way. I'm thinking uh, Hank Snow. We're going back. This is before my time for sure. <laughs> but Hank Snow went down and, and he settled down there, played the Opry, and they, he hung out with, you know, the who's who of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've had some cross-border kind of music coming back and forth. Um, the Americans had come up here and tour in Canada and discovered that there was a big following for the music. Canadians started to tour a bit down there. Um, so it's, I'm not sure if there's a lot different. We certainly have a different sound overall. And um, in the east coast of Canada, we have a strong Acadian and Celtic influence in our music. So, I mean, there have been plenty of Canadian rockers. Uh, oh, what, gosh, yeah. how do you How do you wind up um, playing uh, country as opposed to, you know, rock or, or something else? What drew you? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I started out... Um, in a very much a, a, in a you know country setting, I grew up on farms and um, and uh, we had country music in the house every weekend. My dad was a, a bit of an amateur player, and he started playing in bands. And they'd go out and they, I think they'd do these dances at the little legion halls, and 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 and, and, and they'd do barn dances where somebody opened up a barn, and in the fall after harvest, they'd have this big corn roast barn dance. So my dad did all of that, and. Um, and I really hadn't been exposed to rock music until I moved into, you know, town, um, which was, you know, 25 minutes away. And we moved in there and I got to see what a town of, you know, it was huge. It was like 18,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> that was big. And so I got exposed to rock music and I started to play some in high school. By the time I finished high school, I was pretty versed on rock music. And then I, I never stopped playing country. And I played in all these bands. My dad kind of integrated me into his band. And then he went and raced stock cars for a few years because that's what he wanted to do. Mm. And, uh, but I stayed with music and I never stopped. And, um, and then I played in bands that did country and rock. So we would do, back in the day, we would do Beatles songs and we were doing Queen and Super Tramp. And then we'd do Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, and, you know, Ronnie Millsap. And then we'd turn, you know, and we'd just... Leonard Skinner, and, were, and we did some R&B kind of uh, bluesy kind of stuff, mm -hmm. so Muddy water. So we just played a little bit of everything, and I did that for a number of years and very successfully had a lot of fun doing that. So for me, it's, it's more than country uh, music for sure, but I've always maintained, you know, playing country music, and I make a living writing and, and, and singing it these days. Well, and I guess too, being you know, being in small towns, villages, if you will, uh, you're more apt to play a broader variety of music for a broader variety of tastes, right? I mean, you want to appeal well, to yeah. more people. And radio, 
like country radio or community radio, you know, they play everything. Mm -hmm. um, they're not focused on just, they don't have a big enough market to play like one genre of music. So you would get a variety of things. There were country stations, but they were more in town. So there was one in town. In fact, my uncle worked as a disc jockey on one in, in Coburg, Ontario. And so there were those things going on. But in the rural areas, mm -hmm. they play quite a wide variety of uh, programming. And just uh, for people who are getting this interview uh, via video, uh, tell, tell everybody where you are because it's a pretty unique uh, building as I understand it. Yeah, I live in a um, schoolhouse that was built in 1873 and it was renovated and uh, of course and uh, we've got like second floors everywhere but the main room is huge. Up the peak here in the vaulted area is about 20, I'd say about 20 feet. And then behind me, well, I think you can see some of this, is a big fireplace. It's about 12 feet. Mm -hmm. That's the small hole <laughs> in the main room. But we're in a, a small uh, village, just outside of a small village, Sterling, Ontario, which is kind of straight across the lake almost from Rochester and then about a half an hour north of Lake Ontario. So it, 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 looks, it looks kind of country to me. It's like uh, Loretta Lynn would be comfortable in that room, I'm thinking. I mean, you know what? Everybody's comfortable in this room. <laughs> this is a very cool room. It's a very warm, friendly room. And uh, I'm often in the winter, I'm not traveling as much. I'm back and forth to Nashville a lot writing. But when I'm home um, in the winter, I'll have a pot of uh, stew or a pot of soup, homemade soup on the stove. So when people come in, there's always good smells usually, you know. Um, my wife is a doctor, has a practice in Belleville, Ontario. So um, when I'm home, I'm the uh, chief cook and bottle washer. Hmm. I like it, actually. Nice. And um, for, for people who don't know you, they've pro they may have heard you playing or singing or working with someone else over, over time. Yeah, a lot. I, uh, uh, in my 20s, I started, uh, late 20s, I started playing some sessions and uh, playing in recording with recording acts. And then we ended up, you know, I found myself opening up as the bands got better and the recording acts I was supporting as a bass player and a harmony singer. Um, you know, as that, that happened, as it got better, I mean, I was at, at better venues and larger venues and, and bigger shows. And then um, I signed on with a band called South Mountain, which was an award-winning band up here, and they wanted to replace their lead singer. And uh, I took over that position, and then we traveled a lot in Europe. Uh, probably almost twice a year, I think we'd tour Europe. Canada, we went pretty much coast to coast every year. We'd go uh, to the west, and then, then we'd make maybe one or two runs down to the east, which is a lot closer from here. Hmm. And what uh, what do you enjoy about you know about the life, about country music, about the travel, about the recording? What you know, what keeps you at it? I like the people. Hmm. It's always the people for me. Um, I've got to meet some amazing people. Some have become like you know, diehard uh, fans, but but they become friends more than that. They're people first, right? And and I remember, um, I mean, we just used to stand in line. We made sure that anybody that ever wanted our autograph, or mine at least, and, and a picture signed or something, you know, I would make sure that we, the last, every person that would stand in those lines, sometimes for an hour. Um, so I, I like the people. I, I've always liked that. I like listening to stories. I'm the guy that would get up early and uh, and walk around and all of a sudden having broken English conversation with a couple of guys doing some block work. And we were in Germany. I remember this. And they were from, I don't even know where they're from, Romania or something like that. And uh, they shared their pot of really bad coffee <laughs> with me. And uh, they rolled up homemade cigarettes and they offered me one. I didn't smoke, but just just the people. Everywhere you go in the world, there's really, if you look, and you don't have to look hard, there's like really cool little things and conversations that occur. Hmm. And they all later become songs somehow. That's some of the things that happen. It's funny how being an observer of life, right? That's what songwriters really are. Mm -hmm. And uh, and how those 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 things work their way into songs. But that's what that for me, it's always been the people. Music is great, too. I mean, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, without the people, you know, there's... You're just sitting in your kitchen of your schoolhouse, renovated, uh, singing songs. Hmm. 
<laughs> and also, well, speaking of people, uh, is are there separate groups that have influenced your 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 your, your singing and performing versus uh, songwriting, or do they tend to be the same? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and that's a really good question, Bob. There's there's two things there: the music and playing the music. When I made it to, to the band called South Mountain, um, that was a definitely about three rungs up the ladder. That was getting up there for me. And I was playing with some superior players, you know, in every way. I was in, in a lot of respects the low man on the, on the totem pole, as they say. But, but um, you learn quickly, and I'm a quick study, and so I would be a sponge, and I would listen to everything that my buddy Steve Batico would do or Don Reed would do in the fiddle, and these guys were great players. And still are. And I would watch that. Lori was a superb harmony singer. We had great drummers, a couple of good drummers. And so you just, the whole thing kind of elevates and elevates and it mushrooms and grows. And uh, so that, just by being with great people that way. Our uh, singer, Colleen Peterson, I was her band leader a number of years. I probably learned more in three short, four short years with Colleen about singing than, than anybody could ever learn. She was amazing. Hmm. Um, uh, she passed away a number of years ago at a very young age, but uh, great singer. Um, and then songwriting, something I've always done. I started when I was 10. I don't know why. <laughs> it was in me to write a song. I wanted to write. And I wasn't somebody that I didn't write like these amazing stories at school. I wrote. I did my job. I didn't skip school, by the way. I was one of these guys that went. I actually liked school. I liked high school. I was a jock that didn't skip. It was a, almost, you know, a contradiction, but I was an athlete and I worked hard at my sports and, and I worked hard at my school. But here I am at 10, I'm writing, I started writing a song I'm, and I ha can't to this day tell you why I just, it's in me to write. I have to, if I don't, I feel like I'll explode. I can't. And every song is like the best song in the world when you're in the middle of it. And then the next one becomes that, and the next one. But I started hanging out also with good songwriters. Uh, in that band, um, my buddy Lori, uh, Lori Laporte Patico was a good writer. And we started writing together. And uh, just out of kind of necessity and wanting to. And uh, we were in the band together. We wanted to write songs that would suit us. So what better way than to two of us write? And Steve joined us a couple of times. But Lori and I enjoyed writing together. And my writing started to improve because I'm doing it more. Uh, then I started writing in the United States, and I started writing with some hit songwriters. And, and I still do, like John Scott, Cheryl, uh, Kim Tribble. Uh, I just wrote last week with Benita Hill. Uh, these aren't household names, but if you Google these folks, they've got quite a list of platinum. And they're, but they're, they're good writers, and they just love to write. They just, it's the same kind of idea. They just have to do it. Well, not to put you too much on the spot, but do you remember that first song that you wrote at 10? I do. Yeah? Do you, I do. Do you... It's, called, it's called Someone Like You, and I wrote it like any good 10-year-old boy. I wrote it for my mom. Oh, okay. I, I don't suppose you'd want to play a lick or two of that. Sure. Uh, sure. Now, if it sounds like um, Bakersfield, California... Something that Buck Owens would have done, it was because I pretty much, for a while there, was listening to Buck Owens. That's all I listened to. Uh, I'll give you the chorus. Someone like you, when he's feeling sad. Someone like you, he's feeling bad. All he needs is someone like you. Someone like you, who is always true. Someone like you. Feeling blue, all he needs is someone like you. Nice, all right. <laughs> is that did that ever get recorded anywhere? You know what? I finally recorded it about five years ago on my first solo album of just my stuff or stuff I'd co written, and we actually recorded it like a Bakersfield shuffle and uh. And it's great. I'm really happy with it. In fact, quite often people say, you know, I really like that kind of old school Bakersfield kind of shuffle thing and this and that. And when did you write that? I said, well, when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> did, a long time ago. Did your mom hear it when you were 10? Oh, my gosh. That's another story. My mom, we would have these weekend 
house parties because that's what you did back in those days. There was no drinking and driving. We just kind of, if you want, they would have a few toddies, people, and would come over. Some were musical, some weren't. There would be two or three guitars. There might be a fiddle or two. There might be a banjo. And it might be my dad played dobro sometimes. And so all these things would come out. I'd probably go to bed about 10 o'clock just because that's what you do when you're that age. I was like 11, 12, 13. My mom, about 11.30, never failed. Get down here. Sing that song for your mom that you wrote for me. Come on. You got to play this for these. Everybody wants to hear that song. And so my mom, till the day she died, my mom would phone me. She'd say, you got to come over here. We're having company. You got to come over here and sing that song. Mom, I've got to do an interview. Or I've got, Mom, I got to go play at a show that's an hour from here. Well, you need to come over here and sing this for your mom more. <laughs> and I would every chance I got. She was great. Nice. Very sweet. I liked it. And I liked the song. That's why I wondered if you'd recorded it. Yeah, I'll send you. I'll uh, I'll tell you. I'll send that to you because you'll get a giggle out of it. All right. It, it sounds like six because I was listening to sixties, you know, um, Bakersfield. Like I was listening. My dad listened to Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, and George Jones. So I like Buck. He liked George, and we both agreed on Merle Haggard. <laughs> I was I was like ten. You gotta understand. I was like ten. I'm a little kid. That's amazing. That's <laughs> so amazing. it was fun. So so that's where that song came from. Well, so speaking of songs, uh, the main yeah. reason you are here is that you are going to uh, play your new single, uh, Long Story Longer, for us. Um, after you wet your whistle, do you want to uh, set it up a little bit and tell us something about it? Sure. Um, a couple of folks that I write with, um, just outside of Nashville, Templeton Thompson and uh, Sam Gay, both accomplished writers um, with the uh, appropriate you know, gold and platinum hanging on their walls. And uh, nice people. Uh, Tempe's a horsewoman. She's big in horses. And Sam's just, they're both great writers, great people. We had this right that we were finishing up because the song was going to a certain artist. We wanted to tighten it up. So we worked hard on that. We got it. But it was, it was probably about three or four hours of pretty intense work. When we got that done, we um, were just kind of talking at the door. And I was thinking about heading out back into town get in and get some catfish and beer somewhere. And, and, um, and we were just gabbing and I said something that I always say, like, well, to make a long story longer, <laughs> right. Which is something that I say, cause they're never short. Everybody says, well, to make a long story short, but it's never, whenever you hear that, you mean, oh, here we go. More stories. So I always say to make a long story longer. And Sam goes, what do you say? We make a long story longer. I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. Right. It's, it's, uh, and then so, and they knew a whole lot about about uh, my wife and I. We share our lives, and, and we always write from that place. So we, uh, I was, I unpacked the guitar. <laughs> we sat down and whipped this off. I was tracking, uh, I was tracking uh, shortly after that, and I included this on the next session. Hmm. All right, want to hear it? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Story longer. 
será de su house. Look at us now. Sitting on this front porch swing. There's no else I'd rather be. And we're blessed. We've lived a lot of life together. We've been down every kind of road. So what do you say we make a long story long? What do you say we keep on making history? All right, very nice. Thank you very much. That was great. And so, how often does your wife figure into your music? Since you a lot. <laughs> I, I had a feeling. <laughs> yeah, a lot. And I have a, um, I have a uh, thirteen-year-old son. My youngest is thirteen, mm -hmm. and um, and um, so he does sometimes too. We've got a couple of really good songs we had uh, about um, just some of the challenges he's had to face in life, and um, and so uh, I remember one of the songs. I'll just give you a short story. Uh, same people, Sam and Tempe. It always happens with them. We were having Mexican food sitting in the restaurant. We were in the middle of this right uh, for a song called Blindsided. Uh, you might have heard that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're in the middle of this right for Blindsided. And, um, and it was going well. And we all decided food. We need food. We're going food. Off we go. Found this great Mexican place. We all, the three of us love Mexican food. And um, and we were talking and we were just sharing stories and life with each other. And, and uh, some of the things they'd been through. I was telling about Mary Ellen, how she... Uh, you know, sometimes she's always tells me, tells me what she's not, but I'm amazed at everything that she is. And and I was bringing a fork up as I just said it, and Tempe was bringing a fork up. And she went, oh, and we looked at each other, and I said to her, did you hear that? And she went, I did. So Mexican food, back in the car, Tempe's in the back, humming away. And we got back to the house. We put blindsided over here because we knew that I was pretty much on a wrap. We, we, we needed an hour on it. And then we wrote this other uh, whole new song called Everything You Are. Hmm. And it kind of encompassed some of the stuff that, uh, well, it's just about being with somebody that, you know, they, they, they're amazing. They're an amazing person. They don't necessarily see it. But, but so it was, that's what the hook is, you know. You keep telling me about all the things you're not, but I'm amazed at everything you are. And that works, especially with my son, Noah, who had some time being bullied at school. And he had a tough go. Hmm. You know? So his self-esteem was a little down. But that song, you know, we wrote that, and Noah's in there, you know. Nice. And yeah. uh, how how often how often do you write new material? Oh, every day. Every day. Uh, if if it's not if I'm now I'm in the middle of building a ten foot harvest table <laughs> because I can and because we need one. Mm -hmm. A tree that I knocked down in the front yard with my brother in law George a couple of years ago. So I'm in machining it. It's almost all done. So I've been spending some time doing that, but. Even when I'm working on that, I found myself thinking about a song I'm working on. So every day I've got a line or two. Uh, like today, I'm sitting around and working on two different songs today. Um, so it just never, never shuts off. I can shut it off. When we go out, my wife and I like to dance. So sometimes we'll go out to hear a band or some music uh, and uh, or a concert. Got to hear like uh, the Eagles this summer, mm -hmm. uh, which was very cool. <laughs> James Taylor a couple of years ago. So we, we've been getting out a little bit to some of that. So I could shut it down, but uh, the writing just, it's always right there. Just, just slightly below the surface. right? And I mentioned when we started talking that what I liked in the songs that I've heard uh, to date is a little bit of whimsy. There's a little, little lightheartedness at times. Oh, yeah. Is that, I mean, you come by yeah. that naturally, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> My dad, I'm sure he was a class clown. He never really talked about it because when I was in high school, he just said, you need to buckle down and get your grades together. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure my dad was a class clown because he was, he was funny. And he ended up retiring early. And when I was in South Mountain, he, became, he was a professional truck driver. So when he retired, he drove the bus for us. He drove us around all over Canada. 
Wow. So I got to know my dad on a whole other level. Uh, and he's he was a riot. He was absolutely hilarious, and he was fun to be around. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You, you, you got a lot to live up to for your own son then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, I think we do okay. Yeah. Uh, we get along very well. We're tight. We're very close. Um, before I met my wife, Noah and I was just Noah and I together for a few years. I mm-hmm. uh, was a single dad, and we were doing very well. And, uh, and, and we just, we just get on well. We, I mean, that's the only, I don't know how else to say it. We're pretty close. Good. Good. Well, so as, as we kind of wrap this part up, uh, what's next? Are you, will you be, uh, the single is out long story longer. Uh, yeah. will you be uh, playing, uh, around Ontario? Will you be traveling? What's, uh, what's ahead? Yeah. Oh, uh, there's an album that, um, in fact, the vocals, Uh, Just got finished, the harmony vocals just got finished uh, today. Uh, So I sent that off to the studio. And um, my buddy Andy's going to mix it for me, and I'm going to have a review of that. So this album of all these songs that you've been hearing and some new ones that you haven't heard is going to be done before Christmas. Hmm. So then we're just getting that all finished up. Uh, I think the artwork is all done now. You know, there's a lot to it. Uh, Looking at going to Europe for the beginning of the year uh, for uh, about three or four weeks over there. Uh, Three, I think. Uh, I'm hoping. Uh, so I don't like to be out too long. Um, I, I'm everybody's fine at home, but I just, I just, I'm not. So it's, after three weeks, I'm looking for the door. You know, I want to get home. I like my my wife and my my son. So there and possibly down to New Zealand. Uh, mm-hmm. There's been some talk about that, so we're exploring that. And I'm back and forth to Nashville a lot. Okay. So I'll be heading back to Nashville uh, in a few weeks. More writing, or and we we do some demoing down there. Uh, as well as some recording up here. Nice. All right. Well, uh, folks, listen, you can find Dan Washburn's new single, Long Story Longer, uh, probably in great stores everywhere, online or real, or you can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you're watching uh, on mrmedia.com or on, uh, well, on mrmedia.com, uh, below the video you will see art for the uh, the single, Click on that. It'll take you somewhere. You can uh, order it and ha- own it, download it, play it to your heart's content. Uh, Dan, uh, you've got a website. I believe it's danwashburn.ca. It is. Okay. So D A. Yeah. Dan. Yeah, danwashburn.ca. Okay. And um, you- on Spotify, I'm on uh, Twitter. All all of the. Uh, all the usual suspects, Facebook, and there's a Facebook and music page on Facebook as well. Very good. That was my next question, so you covered that. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, so thanks, Bob. I've really enjoyed this. This is uh, really nice. My pleasure. Dan, uh, I was just going to say uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Media, today and uh, playing us a little music, too. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Bob.